The Youth's Instructor, October 17, 1895. Humanity, the Lost Pearl. Conclusion. Those who receive Christ by faith will be looked upon by heaven as precious pearls for which the merchantman has paid an infinite price, and the human agents who find Christ will realize that they have found a heavenly treasure. They will be anxious to sell all that they have in order to buy the field which contains this treasure. As they contemplate the love of God, as the plan of salvation opens to their view, as the mystery of Christ's condescension becomes plainer to them, as they see the sacrifice that He made for them, they count nothing too dear to give up for His sake. The more they dwell upon the wonderful love of God, the vaster becomes its proportions, and the brightness of the glory of God becomes too glorious for mortal vision. The Lord God of heaven collected all the riches of the universe and laid them down in order to purchase the pearl of lost humanity. The Father gave all his divine resources into the hands of Christ in order that the richest blessings of heaven might be poured out upon a fallen race. God could not express greater love than he has expressed in giving the Son of his bosom to this world. This gift was given to man to convince him that God had left nothing undone that he could do, that there is nothing held in reserve, but that all heaven has been poured out in one vast gift. The present and eternal happiness of man consists in receiving God's love and in keeping God's commandments. Christ is our Redeemer. He is the Word that became flesh and dwelt among us. He is the fountain in which we may be washed and cleansed from all impurity. He is the costly sacrifice that has been given for the reconciliation of man. The universe of heaven, the world's unfallen, the fallen world, and the confederacy of evil cannot say that God could do more for the salvation of man than he has done. Never can his gift be surpassed. Never can he display a richer depth of love. Calvary represents his crowning work. It is man's part to respond to his great love by appropriating the great salvation the blessing of the Lord has made it possible for man to obtain. We are to show our appreciation of the wonderful gift of God by becoming partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We are to show our gratitude to God by becoming a co-worker with Jesus Christ, by representing His character to the world. In great mercy the Lord has rolled back the thick darkness from before His throne, that we may behold Him as a God of love. Moses desired to understand the character of God, and he prayed, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And the Lord descended in the cloud, and stood with him there, and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him, and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty. In every word and action of Jesus Christ, We are to recognize the voice and the attributes of eternal love. For this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. The Lord would have his followers enraptured with God through the knowledge of his paternal character. The Lord looks upon souls as precious pearls, and through the merits of Christ, 
we should esteem others as of great value, making every possible effort to cooperate with Christ in saving precious pearls for the glory of God. Satan is seeking to keep men in ignorance of the attributes of God and is counterfeiting the angels of light in order that he may deceive souls and thus cause their ruin. The Lord would have those who serve him show forth the love of Jesus Christ, that men may be able to detect the difference between the character of Christ and the character of Satan. We should be constantly on guard, lest Satan shall obtain an advantage over us, and cause us to have a spurious spirituality. Christ has valued us as precious pearls, but Satan is constantly working to make us of no value in moral worth. Though the Lord has made every provision that man shall be transformed in character and made like unto himself, because iniquity abounds, the love of many waxes cold. Satan engages the attention and causes the mind to become so engrossed with earthly, sensual things that the knowledge of God is lost and the soul is not inspired with the thought of the riches of Jesus Christ. The Lord does not propose to save us in companies. Individually, we are to make our choice. One by one, we are to appropriate the grace of God to the soul, and one cannot decide for another what course he shall take. The Lord says we are to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do, of his good pleasure. Those who decide to receive Christ enlist themselves to be co-workers with him in saving the souls of others. In presenting Christ to their fellow men, they themselves grow in the knowledge of God and of Christ. As they lift Christ up, their eyes are anointed so that they can distinguish the relationship of Christ to the human family. They become wise, and in meekness and lowliness, as opportunity opens, they present to tried and tempted souls the sublime reality of the saving grace of God.